Today has been an SMP day and I am very excited uh, to answer this question because um, I was on the Spot My Photos user community um, right here and it's a community that um, a lot of Spot My Photos users are starting to get into and, and talk about. And so um, after talking to Ryan last night and some new features that are out, I wanted to kind of push out a question. And my question was simple, is like, hey, all the new SMP members, um, that are in here. Are you thinking about SMP? Are you using it? Do you have any questions? And so we're going to talk about a specific set of questions that I got from a member in the group right now. On guys welcome back to the channel it's jeremy with jeremy lou photography thank you so much for tuning in guys if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing video helps you anyway, give it a thumbs up and then click that bell for notifications i'll tell you every time i come on i'm sitting in my car about to head to a commercial shoot um, but i have about 20 minutes or so and we're gonna knock it out um but um i have to apologize first this is to george in the group i uh i thought he was joking with me i thought he was being silly um i, I didn't take it in any negative way i just thought it was two homies hanging out and um i think he got I think he was being serious, and I actually still don't 100% know, um, but he called me an a-hole, so I'm assuming that he was being serious. But my question was, um, who here is, is just to see what SMP can do and hasn't started using it? And I would love to see the answers to your questions. So my question is about SMP alone and not about camera use, because I'm assuming that everybody's using SMP is already a photographer, already understands their camera or their photo booth or anything, and now they're adding SMP into the system. I don't imagine anybody is just getting a camera and shooting for the first time and uh, shooting events and using SMP, but maybe that's the case. And that's kind of why I got confused. So George, I apologize, um, but I'm still gonna answer your questions here. Um, so George's first question was, what general camera settings do you start at? So any event that I shoot, um, it dictates on the light, but um, I always shoot at a very open aperture. So I'm always at f 2.0 or 2.8, depending on the lens that I use. And then I dictate everything else around there. I typically like a shutter around 100, 1 100 to 1 125th of a shutter speed. And then I up my ISO to taste. Um, so all that means is I care more about the depth of field than anything else. If I'm shooting couples, F2 works great for me. But if you're shooting more than um, like two or three people or stacks of people, you're going to probably want to shoot at F4 and then dictate to that. The last thing you're going to do always in your setup of your triangle setup of your F-stop, your shutter and your um, ISO is going to be the last thing is always going to be the ISO. You're going to up your ISO to taste. So I always love setting my camera to 2.0, 2.8, shutter to 1 100th, 1 25th, 1 60th, something like that where I still can track movement, um, but I'm not too dark. And then I just up my ISO to what I need. In some of these events, I'm up to 2,000, 2,500 ISO with my, ca my, cam my uh, camera, with my Canon R6. And that seems to do great for me. Um, the ISO capability is why we buy new cameras because the sensors are so much better and it works out so much better so we can play with that. If I'm using a flash, it'll change. Um, and if I'm using natural light, it'll change. But both are compatible with SMP. It doesn't even matter. Um, in fact, the event today, I just did natural light as I was testing a new feature for SMP during an event. And I just used natural light. The lighting wasn't the greatest, but I wasn't shooting for them. I was shooting to test out. Um, the next question is, how can you get the most out of your flash? Um, how do you have it set up? So typically when I'm doing a run and gun, uh, meaning it's not a photo booth setup. It's I'm running around, I'm shooting candids. I have um, a Godox can uh, flash on my camera and it's tilted to the side. So it's either tilted 45 degrees this way or 45 degrees this way. I never tilt it forward to the subject because that's gonna create um, really harsh light. It's gonna create the red eyes. And I never shoot it straight up because I'm wasting a lot of my light. So I like shooting up at an angle. It creates a 45 degree push and I do get a slight um, Rembrandt lighting that happens with that. Nothing. It's super subtle. Um, and I use a little dome that goes on top or I use a magmod system and I put a little um, sphere on it. God, I call it the mag boob. I don't know what the, it's in a mag sphere, but it goes on top. And what these systems are is it, it sits on top and then allows the light to go up and then scatter around. But I still shoot it at an angle, allowing the light to go up and push down this way because wherever the light goes, it will come back down. Um, in order to get the most out of your flash, you want that high ISO, high ISO capability um, and you want to raise that um, ISO. So if you raise that ISO, you can actually make your, your flash last longer and use less of it at a lower power. I never want to shoot my flash at 
one one full stop, half stop, or even a quarter stop. I think an eighth of a stop is the most that I will use so that I don't kill the I don't kill the flash and not every shot that I take um, is wasted. Um, and when I shoot a group setting, I'm typically taking three to four photos every time and maybe just little modifications, but I wanna make sure that every time I hit that button, a flash does pop. Um, so if your flash is too high, um, or you're using too much power, it will re the recycle time will come into play and you will lose it. Um, hopefully that, that answers that question. Which metering mode do you use? Um, if it's one of the automatic modes, I, I don't. Everything I shoot is manual. Um, but on the metering modes, I just use spot metering. Uh, the beauty with your cameras now is that you can see everything that's there. But when I am metering in a dark area or dark environment, I am shooting one stop under. So when I'm looking at my my um, f-stop and then I do my shutter and then I do my ISO, I make sure that when you're looking at the thing that has like the minus one or the plus one, two, three, I'm going minus one down. And what that does is it makes my environment a little bit dirtier, a little bit darker, and I get to see the natural lights that are happening. So think of uh, a DJ putting up spotlights everywhere or there's a chandelier or there's fire or candles or whatever. If you shoot that one stop under, that detail will show up. And you basically will then use your flash to light up your subject. Um, if you try to go one stop over or even one stop the, the correct exposure, that backdrop will start to come in more in play and you'll lose the, the intimate lighting that's in the back there. Um, so spot metering is what I use and I've always used it. I've never played with it. And I feel like now with mirrorless cameras, it's a cheat. So you really don't, it doesn't matter as long as you can see what you're seeing. But back in the day, spot metering was where I went because I would always target my subject. And then I knew what exposure they were at and that would help me out a ton. And what are some tips and tricks for making the most out of your indoor um, dark or social events? Um, you're going to overshoot. You're going to um, um, play a lot more. And don't be afraid of lowering your shutter to create shutter drag. Um, so I always say in any given shoot that I shoot, make sure that you get what you need first. Get the, get the shots that you're supposed to get, right? So it's a nice landscape portrait. It's a regular um, portrait of them, vertical portrait but then you can play a little bit. So when you're shooting the event or you're shooting people walking around or dancing, it's okay to lower that shutter. You're still doing the same principles of everything, but you're able to, to shutter drag. Remember, the flash will freeze your subject, meaning that once whatever the flash hits in a photo, if it's enough power, it will make the photo, the, the whatever's in the photo stop, and then everything else in the background will get blurry. So you can turn your camera, tilt your camera, play around with your camera, and you'll create these really cool effects. Also remember that every time you take a picture, you're gonna chimp your picture, meaning you take the picture, it's old school term, take a picture, you look at it, and then you take it again. Even if we have mirrorless, even if we have all that, you're shooting in a dark environment, you're walking around, you can't rely on the same ceilings, um, you can't rely on the same bounce everywhere. Just make sure that you take a couple photos, look at it, always say, baller, this looks great. And if it doesn't look great, say, baller, this looks great. Do an adjustment, take another picture, make sure you got it. Um, with the new feature of the auto enhancing that Spot My Photos has come out with, and I'll talk about that more in another video, this is going to help us so much because we can be a little bit off and the AI is going to build, that's built into uh, Spot My Photos now will help you a little bit as long as you enable it in the thing. All right, George, I hope that helps. I went through all four questions. If I missed anything, let me know. Uh, again, I apologize for the miscommunication earlier. Um, this a-hole is just another photographer. Um, and my, my only mistake was I, I looked at your stuff in your post and you were a photographer. So I just thought we were, we were being buddies. Uh, <laughs> but that is not the case. Anyways, hope you're having a good day. I'll talk to you next time.